Today, I'm delighted to welcome the governors from both parties to discuss uh, the best ways to reform occupational licensing laws. In many states, workers must pay thousands of dollars and complete months of, and years, even, of training to enter fields such as real estate tourism and many others. Nationally, the average training for cosmetologists is 11 times longer than the training for emergency medical technicians, and sometimes training costs $20,000 for a cosmetology license. So it's a Wait, what? Weirdly enough, in our research, we found that this comparison comes up a lot whenever there's a debate about occupational licensing. The Institute for Justice says 1,500 hours is too much time. For perspective, EMTs only need 154 hours of training. To become an emergency medical technician takes one sixteenth the number of hours in school that it does to legally cut hair in the state. The implication is that there's too much job regulation and that it's a government failure for cosmetologists to be training longer than EMTs. So what's going on here? Before we dive in, we have to understand what occupational licensing even is. It's a, a right to practice. So if you don't have permission from government to work, you're fined or can go to jail. And this debate about how professions are regulated spans decades. In the Middle Ages, professional guilds decided who could practice certain trades. By the 1700s, economist and philosopher Adam Smith argued against job regulations. And in the 1950s, roughly 5% of U.S. occupations required a license. In 2016, it was 22%. But there's no blanket licensing law. It's all up to the states. So if you're an electrician, you have to get a license in Alaska, but not Arizona. When it comes to cosmetologists and EMTs, there's a big discrepancy. In DC, cosmetologists have to complete 1,500 hours of training. In Iowa, it's 2,100. To become an EMT, most states require trainees to complete an approved course comprised of at least 150 hours of training. That means, on average, cosmetologists do train 10 times longer than EMTs. But it's not that simple. The comparison leaves out the additional training that EMTs usually complete after taking their exam and the positioning of the two careers within their respective fields. But politicians, economists, and researchers from across the political spectrum say licensing laws have gone off the rails. Former Vice President Joe Biden has chimed in on the debate. You have to get a license to do something like 400 hours of training in another state to move in to be able to braid hair. A lot of braiders are low income, so if you have this program that is expensive, I'm worried that folks who have learned this technique from their family members are then being forced to pay for expensive licensing and that sort of stuff. So I'm worried about access. We've heard from some cosmetologists and other folks who sort of say like, Look, the sanitation side of this is really important, mm -hmm. and the scalp care side of this is really mm -hmm. important. But a lot of that is common sense, right? Don't yeah. pull too tightly, keep your tools clean. And mm -hmm. even for like the learning aspect, cosmetology schools aren't teaching a lot about, if anything, about African American hair. Critics of licensing have echoed Destiny's wariness about the cost of cosmetology school. The median salary for a cosmetologist in the United States is around $25,000. For-profit beauty schools can charge on average $17,000. But licensed cosmetologists argue that the training is necessary for quality and safety. And I know nationally there is a lot of states that are looking at just doing away with licensure completely. Uh, which to us would be a huge public hazard. Wait, why? Help me understand. Well, because if someone was, if you came in to get, like let's say you wanted your hair blonde, and right. from scalp to ends, all blonde, okay. someone that didn't know what they were doing with the chemicals to put on your head could, could burn you severely, cause your hair to fall out, and, and really damage, hurt you, if right. they don't know what they're doing. Right. So to allow anyone those tools to be able to do that stuff, you know, uh, is dangerous. We read through the comments and, and sort of what led to this discussion and the interesting part about to me what was said is that like sure EMT 150 to 200 hours but then they talked about practical training after that. Our students are doing that all in one, one, one place. You know what I mean? So the comparison for us wasn't exactly 
the same. In the medical world, being an EMT is an entry-level position. And so some argue that paramedics, which are rung higher on the medical totem pole, make for a more apt comparison to a cosmetologist. For example, in Maryland, cosmetologists must complete 1,500 hours of training or apprentice for two years. Paramedics have to be an EMT for at least 12 months and finish 1,100 more hours of training. And EMT schools and employers have different requirements. Dr. Deja Merriweather runs a workforce development school that caters to students with barriers to employment. When employers of their graduates started to notice the newly trained EMTs weren't able to perform certain tasks, the school increased their training hours. With us being a workforce development school, we get a majority of residents in the District of Columbia that come to us with many, many, many barriers. And so, Along with being trained in the BEMT, mm -hmm. we have to also train a person how to do career and job readiness. So when you speak about is there enough hours, each program is unique. Politicians from both sides of the aisle are interested in reform, but there's no consensus on how to make that happen. Part of the challenge is that there's not enough research to say how licensing laws protect the public. It's certainly not a black and white issue, certainly consumers and the public needs to be protected. Is there evidence that they did protect consumers or have protected consumers? I think there's some evidence, uh, but it, it's very mixed. Uh, there's some evidence that, for example, the licensing of midwives in the early 1900s uh, helped reduce uh, uh, infant and uh, mother's mortality rates. But, but that, uh, that's one of the few studies that have been fairly conclusive that regulations uh, improved overall quality. Can you help me understand why we still have them then? A lot of people who are, who are licensed, uh, about uh, over 22 percent of the U.S. workforce, if you're licensed you can raise your own wages as much as 15 to 20 percent over the course of your lifetime. Uh, so that's a huge benefit to those people. In my mind, I want my EMT to be like, really? Licensed. They, I want them to know everything. You may not want your EMT to be licensed. You, you may want that person to have lots of training and be knowledgeable about your condition. Right. Uh, and that, that's very different. Politicians may agree that occupational licensing laws need to be updated, but by comparing two very different professions, they're missing the point. Each industry has its own unique challenges and responsibilities to the public. If there are statements that you've heard politicians say that don't quite make sense at rallies, at state fairs, on that one friend's feed, let us know. Send us a note or a tweet or a paper airplane with what they said and your question. We'll check it out. You can follow along by subscribing to The Post's YouTube channel and by watching more fact checker videos here.